It attacks with its rending, crushing tentacles, some of which are 70 feet long, and by psionic blasts and mind thrusts, drains the life force and vital juices from any creature it can slay and then surround. Hail and well met, and welcome back to another Realms Lore episode. I am here with the original creator of the Realms, Sarah Ed Greenwood himself. And today, we are talking about a pretty interesting location called Pure Waters, which resides in the Underdark. Ed, you want to fill them in a little? Sure. Um, there are many little things on the map of the Underdark that are just names until now. So, there's a certain famous drow city, and near it is a lake, called by some Lake Solmere, called by others Pure Waters. And we're going to explore why it isn't just like a puddle of water underground. It's way more interesting than that. So, if you are enjoying these Realms Lore videos, please consider becoming a Protector of the Realms by going to patreon.com slash edgreenwood. And if you support us there, we are able to continue making videos for you here. So, thank you so much, and for the time being, please enjoy this Realms Lore video on Pure Waters. Pure Waters an underdark landmark. Located in the middle dark underneath eastern Cormir, roughly just south of the Wyvern Water, but extending halfway to the Dragonmere, adjacent to the loath worshipping far trading drow city of Shindilrin, Lake Thalmir is a widely known middle dark landmark, thanks to its unusual size and its unusual water warmth and purity. In shape, it resembles a torus when seen from directly above or below that studded all around its edges with greater and lesser thorns. These long, narrow, pointed projections are actually fjord-like flooded arms of the lake caused by magma shattering rock to create faults, then flowing along those faults to reach a large chamber where phreatic explosions occurred, and the lake now lies. Many of them are now layers for eels or stranger creatures, including at least one freshwater eye of the deep or aquatic beholder, and a drowned lich. The presence of such menaces has thus far prevented Shindilrin from expanding to surround and incorporate Lake Salmere. That expansion would have otherwise been nigh inevitable, as most of the lake shores are beaches of rock stairs, each tread of these steps being a rock ledge 60 to 80 feet broad. These ledges are the exposed edges of cleavage planes of rock. Their presence makes the scores of small outlying caverns scattered about the lake wide but low ceilinged. The large and lofty mushroom-shaped vault chamber that contains the city of St. Schindelrin and the pure water lake it stands on the shores of, Derbron, and the cavern that holds Thalmir itself are the only exceptions to this local cavern shape. Derbron, named for a local drow war leader who perished in its waters during a long ago battle for control of Schindelrin, is a pit-shaped lake that drains into the lower dark. Slowly, its water seeping through bedrock. Derbron is itself an overflow lake of Thalmir, receiving waters from Thalmir only when they get high enough to run along a natural rock trench, dry throat, to depart the pure waters, Thalmir's nickname among middle dark traders. Who was Thalmir? Well, Lake Salmir is named for a Thalud, tomb tapper, chieftain or war leader whose bones lie somewhere in its depths. Beloved by his nomadic and long gone from this part of the Underdark as a traveling tribe, people, he was interred there by them after his death over ten centuries ago. Individual Thalud still make rare pilgrimages to Thalmir's shores, to sleep there and dream in hopes that the brooding sentience of Thalmir will send them guidance in their dreams, as gods do when they face important life decisions. Lake Thalmir is a deep, 
magma-warmed body of water whose warm depths support a forest of fur stack fungi, rooted, branchless tree trunk growths that can become 60 feet long but are usually just over 40 feet when mature. Their fur is all over growths of thousands of cilia that glean nutrients from the water, cleansing it. So, the waters of Lake Thalmere are very pure, safe for all creatures to drink. The vast bottom carpet forest of stack fungi bend over and then spring up again in unison, unhurried endless cycles that generate ongoing currents to circulate the lake waters to feed the stacks, keep the lake clean and spread its warmth throughout its waters like a gigantic pump. Blind fish, known as Ludzlar, that are very similar to the silverfin abundant along the Sword Coast and just as edible, inhabit the lake in numbers. Preyed upon only by the Shindorinar, Drow, and the lake's sightless black serpent eels, who are few and can grow to over 20 feet in length. These predators are demonstrably attracted to the scent of blood in the lake waters and attach and gnaw on Luzlar like lampreys, eventually devouring all of a sucked dry victim fish. Long ago, when Drow were exploring this area, but it established no settlements in it, this part of the Underdark was home to many cave fishers. Until the Drow eradicated them, they slew many Drow, and thanks to a wayfaring Drow custom of the time, many of those victims were buried in the lake's waters, wearing their armor and with at least one favorite weapon. These interments yield treasure to this day, though no drow will knowingly touch such gleanings as it's considered unlucky, frowned upon by all the gods and earning the ire of the dead, who will haunt the defiler by bringing them misfortune whenever they wield or use such grave goods. However, Lake Salmir's waters hide more exciting treasure too. Its shores long ago hosted a battle between mine flayers and drow, both wanting to rule the area, that resulted in the magic items of some dead combatants being drowned in the lake. Far more recently, in 1473 DR, a vicious fight between a deep dragon and Schindelrinner defenders raged over the lake. In the end, the deep dragon was driven away, forcibly persuaded not to establish its lair on the lake shores, but not before slaughtering hundreds of drow warriors, including dozens of sorcerers and clergy of wolves, whose shattered or bitten apart bodies were lost to the lake's depths, along with their enchanted battle items. These are known to include some enchanted scepters and wands, and at least one command gauntlet that can, can control from afar wands that have been magically linked to its fingers so a wearer can unleash, hopefully with surprise, a battery of artillery in the form of carefully sighted, wedged in place, aimed wands. One of the drowned liches, underwater dwelling human liches, that inhabits an arm of Lake Salnir is Merolix as Arzhund, a Netherese mage fled from the losing side, which represented magical might should equate to ruling rank, in a early civil struggle for control of the floating city Orbital. These days, Arzhund desires nothing more than to be left alone to master, by study and experimentation, the state of being a living gate, or planeswalker able to at will step from plane to plane and so travel and inhabit them all at will. He hopes this new life will end both his loneliness and his failure to find new horizons, new joys, and new sources of power. He's struggling to make progress in becoming a gate. The plane shift powers he mastered long ago, but he's having little success in making his body mutable with ease and hopefully also constantly regenerating so as to be able to weather differing planar conditions without damage and ongoing vulnerabilities. 
For centuries, he's been making only tiny amounts of progress along these lines and so has become gloomy and despondent. Increasingly, he covets magic items brought within his reach by adventurers in hopes he can exploit and plunder them to spur success or at least speed up his progress. However, he has acquired something he can use to defend himself very effectively while he works. The body of Zolvolnar, a damaged undead elder brain. This gigantic brain-like mass with many tentacles no longer has a functioning mind of its own, but obeys the will of Mrolix through spells that he's devised. He literally shelters behind its body, which he keeps stuffed into the narrowing end of the arm of the lake he inhabits, with his tome and magical supplies filled layer behind it, and moves Zavolnar forth only when it must fight for him to dissuade intruders. It attacks with its rending, crushing tentacles, some of which are 70 feet long, and by psionic blasts and mind thrusts, one of each per turn, to a maximum of 12 each per hour. Zavolnar drains the life force and vital juices from any creature it can slay and then surround, expelling lifeless husks after several days when it's done. Its presence has thus far, after dozens of skirmishes that have ended in disasters for the drow, dissuaded the Schindelriner from trying to destroy or drive away Mrolix. And that's Lake Thalmir, an interesting landmark in an underdark studded with interesting landmarks. Elminster deems it one more good place to stay well away from, but he's a safety first force when speaking to ordinary mortals these days, and you aren't an ordinary mortal, are you? Hi, welcome back to Realm Speak, and this time around, we're doing this. And this is Il Rafon. Yeah, I know it's spelled differently. Il Rafon. Like the word eel. Il Rafon. Now, you'll hear the emphasis put in different places by different accents spoken in the realms. Il Rafon. Il Rafon. Il Rafon. But Il Rafon. And I know this is correct because I made this place up. <laughs> Hail and well met. Blip, blip, blip. We're talking about a pretty hot location in a very popular uh, area under mountain, and uh, it's called Pure Waters. Ed, you want to talk a little bit about what's going on? It's not under mountain. Does that not say under <laughs> under dark? <laughs> Damn it! All right, one more time. Sorry. Getting punchy now. Ay yeah yeah. I've only been in those ten minutes. Okay, I've got a drink. That's why my mouth is too dry to say those. It's just the realms. It's okay. Thanks, Ed. <laughs>